all dance, dance, dance with my hands, hands, hands above my. What's up guys, welcome to the gym. I am coach Charlotte, one of the coaches here at Physique Development. Today I'm gonna to be taking you guys through a leg day, focusing on strength. I'll show you guys some cues, some setup tips, and just some best practices for how to approach a strength-focused session. So let's get into it. We're gonna be doing some deadlifts, working up to some heavy sets of four with warm-up sets. It's super, super important to make sure you're still focusing on your execution though. Your warm-up sets and your working sets should look exactly the same. It is not time to start playing around with your form and doing funny things. Keep it tight and stay focused. <laughs> Not like I just did. Something else with deadlifting, but honestly with any sort of lift, is not doing too many warm-up sets. Do the minimum effective dose. Do what you need to get the muscles moving, practice the movement pattern, and get your blood flowing, and then get into your working sets as soon as possible. I'm probably gonna do one more warm-up set after this one, and then I will get into my working sets. I'm only doing two or three reps. I'm doing sets of four, so there's no reason for me to be doing sets of eight, sets of 10, sets of 15. Stick in your rep range and do the exercises that you are doing within your training session at a little bit of a lighter load to prime you to perform later in your training session. One of the most underrated deadlift cues, in my personal opinion, is actually driving your knees out as you pull. If you think about a squat, you'll think about the knee valgus that you'll see, the knees kind of wobbling around. You can see the same thing with a deadlift, and that's putting you in a less strong position to move the load. So think about driving those knees out, keeping them over your toes, and put yourself in a better position to get after it and lift some heavy weight. Okay, so this is 205. My working sets are 215 for the day, so. Let's go for it. This is why I tried switching over to hair clips. Because I d don't want to do this a million times during my trading session. But here we are. Because <laughs> I don't know how to use a hair clip either. <laughs> You'd think it'd be so easy, but it's not. First working set of four. I'm gonna do this first set with my grip, both hands overhand. As I get more fatigued, that's when I'm gonna switch over to the mixed grip. I wanna do like a count. How many times do I adjust my bun in the middle of this workout? We're already at, I think, like eight or nine. Don't rush your rest periods, time your rest periods. Technically just started a timer 30 seconds ago, so we got another minute and a half, two minutes. Don't be afraid to rest until you're ready to go. Your goal here is to perform. Give yourself a long rest period. Stop resting for like 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Give yourself a good four, five, six minute rest period to actually let your ATP levels get back to where they need to be so they can actually help you perform during your next set. <clears throat> what you listening to? Right now, Kanye. Interesting playlist Change. choice. I like some old school Kanye though. Just depends on, the day. depends on the day. We're gonna switch over to the mix grip for this one. My grip is getting a little tired on the last set. So we're gonna give it a little bit of assistance this time around. I did 230 by five last week. My money is on I can do 230 by four this week. So we just finished up with deadlifts. Now I'm gonna get into some squats. And reminder, this is more of a powerlifting based program. Not necessarily gonna align with everybody's goals, but it does with mine in this season of life. I am squatting twice a week right now, which is again new for me, but we're in the volume accumulation phase. So we're kind of building that work capacity, being able to work under heavier loads for higher volumes and putting us in a position where we can then later peak our lifts later on in the program in a couple of months. Thank you. 
three by four to RIR. Saying it out loud so I can't forget. Seventeen over here, at least. Okay, now this one might actually be like sufficiently difficult. I think I was a little, a little bit under two RIR, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little more load. So fun. One more set here, and then the rest of the fun begins. <laughs> I had a conversation with a client just a couple of weeks ago. You know, she had reached out to me asking about going into a fat loss phase, and she and I had been focusing on getting her calories up and focusing on building muscle, and she was in a fantastic place to go into a dieting phase. So we went ahead and did that, but a month and a half or so into the dieting phase, she came to me and she was like, you know what, Charlotte, like I just am not, I'm just not loving this experience. I'm not getting out of it what I wanted to. And I don't really think that dieting and fat loss is my goal. I think that I just went in that direction because it was what everybody was doing at the start of the summer and just what it seemed like I should be doing. But I was able to think through it and realize like, this isn't my actual goal right now. And I admire that so much because so often people will just keep going and just keep going after something that doesn't actually feel exciting to them. And they get to the end of their path and they're like, why did I do all of this? And I was so excited for her, to, for her to actually know what she wanted and to be able to go back down the path, the place where she can actually make the most progress. Because if you're not excited about your goal, you're not gonna get out of it what you could. So it's so much more worth it, in my opinion, to pursue something that you're actually excited about and that you actually want to get better at. Because your ability to make progress there, your you know ceiling for progress is actually much higher. Because the effort that you're going to give, the focus you're going to give, all of that is going to be so much more than if you're just doing something because you feel like you have to. All right, so we're gonna do a superset of glute max cable press back, and then we're gonna pair it with a deficit reverse lunge. Really like this for hitting more of the glutes in the shortened position. That one's great for hitting the glutes in more of the lengthened position. When you are pre-fatiguing in the short position like this, muscles are gonna have to work a little harder in that lengthened position to really engage. So you can get a little bit more out of that lengthened position exercise as a result of it. It might be a little harder, so you may not necessarily be able to push as much load, but that's okay. Just keep that in mind when you are pairing exercises back to back versus doing them on their own. I like the terminology press back for this exercise because I think it can make it easier to maintain control. When you say kick back, people just start kicking, when in reality, we want to hold on, we want to create stability, and we want to press. Also for these, I really like a foot strap that goes around the foot so you can actually press down into it. I'm gonna rest like 30 seconds between each leg. Nothing crazy. So when you're setting up for the glute max press back, a little interesting, but you want your non-working leg really to be aligned with the cable. So you're gonna set up that working leg mostly aligned with the cable. And then you're gonna let that working leg kind of come across, let that knee kind of come out just a little. That's gonna help you really stretch through the glute. And then you're gonna hold on for stability. Stability is your best friend. You guys probably see me make some really weird faces and facial expressions, things like that. And I just wanna say, that is okay. If you need permission to make some faces and to be ugly in the gym, <laughs> I am giving you that permission. Not that you need it, but take the permission from me. Like, I am not here to look cute. I am not here to look pretty. I am not here to be a model. I am here to train hard, and that is what, that is what you are going to see. You are going to see me straining. You are going to see me making some ugly faces, but that's okay. Bringing focus, intentionality, and probably some ugly faces. Bring them all to the gym. They're all welcome here. I'll never forget, I used to post my workouts on Instagram all the time. If you've been following me for a while, you might know that. I was in college. <laughs> Somebody came up to me at the bar that I was bartending at, and they told me, I follow you on Instagram. You post great stuff, but you make a lot of weird faces in your video. <sighs> and what do you want me to say to that? I'm not gonna control my face for you, you 12-year-old. <laughs> Sweat in my eyes. 
All right, so last couple movements of the day. We're making it through, barely, but we are pairing some lying leg curls with some stiff knee deadlifts. Kind of same thing with the last pairing, starting in the short yeah. position, ending in the lengthen position. Helpful for saving time, can be helpful for hypertrophy. Not super helpful when it comes to trying not to die during the training <laughs> session. You know those days when you really don't want to go train, but then you go train, and then you have like the best training session ever? But it's my theory, the body is testing you. How badly do you really want it? If you go when you don't really want to, you are rewarded by having a really solid training session. The body's like, hmm, look at you. You showed up, you did it anyway. Here's your gains. <laughs> you get extra character on those days. You build extra character. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me for this session today. It was a lot of fun. If you guys took something out of this session, this is the kind of thing that I talk about over on my Instagram page all the time. Feel free to message me, feel free to email me. My email will be in the description below. And if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, there will also be a link to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching. We can hop on a call, chat about what you've been doing in the gym. If you want to amp up your intensity in your training sessions, let's chat about it. Let's see what we can do to get you reaching your strength goals and becoming your best self. And thank you so much, Sue and Alex, for letting us hang out in your amazing home gym. It really is just as good as it looks on video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you guys soon.